Holly P works here. First of all, spoilers for Thriller Bark through Onigashima, because I'm going to be jumping around a bit. So, does anybody find it a little weird how many Vegapunk and Frankie parallels that have been going on in the story? They don't have them all the time, but they're sprinkled throughout. Okay, so Kuma attacks Frankie first when Kuma arrives on Thriller Bark. That's not a big deal, but it then leads to him being discovered to be a cyborg like Frankie, right? Okay, fine. It is interesting that Frankie is being used here as a narrative device to introduce Kuma and what Kuma is, but that just could be because they're both cyborgs and it's best to introduce a new narrative device with something that's similar. Okay, that's cool. Interesting but cool. Moving forward in time, the separation happens at Shibani Archipelago, and at this point in the story, we can all come to the conclusion that Kuma knew where he was sending each individual straw hat. So he sends Frankie to Vegapunk's home island. He sends him there. Then, once there, Frankie is able to decipher Vegapunk's blueprints and actually incorporate some of the technology into himself. By that I mean he develops the Ragnar Beam, which is just a version of the Pacifista laser. Okay, that's weird in itself that Frankie was even able to decipher what Vegapunk wrote if Vegapunk is supposedly 500 years in front of everybody else. So, that happens. Time skip happens. We move forward. Bounties are issued again. Now, when the bounties are issued again, Frankie's face isn't on his water poster. It's the General Frankie, okay? That's a little weird, considering that hasn't really happened to anybody else. Not even Sanji, because even though that was played up as a gag, Duval still remotely looked like him at the time. So, that's a little wonky, okay? A little weird. Time passes, Onigashima happens, okay? We find out about Queen. Zen, zen, zen. Queen, so far in the narrative, as far as I know, is the only person who rivals Frankie in terms of being an engineer, okay? There are other areas such as being a geneticist or a chemist like with uh, Caesar Clown and Judge, but in terms of being an engineer, no one really comes as close as Frankie in terms of all the things he's been able to do other than Queen. And in terms of being a cyborg, other than the pacifistas and such made by Vigapunk, nothing else comes close. Frankie and Queen are quite similar. They run very parallel to one another. Okay, so bounties are issued again at the end of Onikashima. Luffy becomes a Yonko, and then we get the bounty posters. And Frankie's is that of the Sunny. Why is his getting so comically pushed back? It's just odd. On top of that, here's another thing, and I know I'm reaching. I'm reaching for the stars here, quite literally. What is Frankie's insignia? What do you know him by? The star, right? He's the only character that really embodies having a star as his emblem. Even the Frankie family wore stars on their stomachs, right? That's his moniker. That's his insignia. So much so that when he redesigned himself the first time, he made that part of his body, okay? Now, when we see the Seraphim in 1059, their pupils are stars. I find this very odd because nobody else really uses stars in One Piece as a brand. There's the criminal brand of clothing, but that's a star with a little stitch through it. That's not a complete regular star. And that's because of Papa Wog is a star stitch. You get it, right? Okay, but not a complete singular star. That's really specifically a Frankie thing. And to top it all off, where does Frankie come from? We actually don't know. He's one of the few straw hats that has sort of like this mysterious origin so i'm not saying that frankie is the son of vegapunk but he might be a relative of vegapunk a cousin a nephew something of the sort because things are becoming a little weird that these sort of bounty inconsistencies that keep happening are vegapunk having some saving grace for his family member by simply pushing the marines off his sim by making each bounty poster more and more ridiculous Future Poly P works here. So, I think another reason why Vegapunk could be influencing the bounty posters could just be because he has pride in his descendant and or family members' inventions and thinks they're really cool. So, it's a way for him to showcase his family members' work to the world while still sort of keeping in line with the bounty poster so he doesn't seem suspicious to the Marines because his family member Frankie 
is indeed a pirate. Okay, back to the video. Also, do you know how an artist scientist works? If the SSG Seraphim are Vegapunk's magnum opus as far as we know, would it make sense to give them a little extra flair that the Pacifistas and or Kuma don't have? Because the Pacifistas are done. They're just kind of an outmoded soldier that has been proven to fail. However, the Seraphim are the top. So if Vegapunk is truly proud of these creations, he would sign them. The pupils are that signature, the star. So that's my theory. Thank you for watching. If you like stuff like this, please feel free to check out my YouTube channel, Poly P Works. And if you like what you see, I would appreciate your subscription. Thank you so much. See you next time.